Today, I have got like baby sis on the podcast. She is a voice that this culture desperately needs, a lover of the word of God. It is the one and only Brenda Palmer. You are going to want to hear this conversation. Welcome to this episode of the Jada Edwards podcast. All right, friends, you here. I'm here. Fresh off I'm the plane. Honored to be here. <laughs> All the way from LA. LA. We don't know why you stood here. We're gonna talk about that later. <laughs> Tell me what is good. Like give a, okay, so let's just say uh nobody knows who you are. Uh, I just saying that hypothetically, because we know people <laughs> know who you are. If they didn't, mm-hmm. in in your 60 seconds, like who is Brenda Vaughn? 60 seconds. Uh, it's not testimonies. It's not testimony service. In 60 seconds, I would just say, I'm just a girl who loves Jesus and say yes to him. And, and I am living the ride of my life as a fruit of my obedience. Yes. And do you have times where you're like, why? Yes. 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 Okay, good. Why? Why? I said yes. <laughs> yeah. And what's happening? Right. Like, what is going on? It's a lot happening. For sure. Yeah. I say that more. <laughs> <laughs> Looking around like, now what? What? And it works? Yeah. <laughs> so that is in- that's interesting because my first question when I talk to people is always like, when when was that moment where you're like, oh, God is calling me to something really different, like something uniquely different than what I had in mind for my life? Do you remember that moment? Um, Man, I would probably say... The first time I ever preached a sermon. Mm, so that would have been September 1st, 2021. And you were how old? I was 30. Okay. And I absolutely never thought I would do that. I never wanted to do that. Yeah. And I never thought I would do that. How did you end up preaching? <laughs> <laughs> In surprise. Talking about, oh, no. Yeah. Like, oh, I guess this is what we're doing. I got it. Yeah. I was like on staff at a church. I worked behind the scenes so I oversaw worship production and comms mm-hmm. and then one day like my pastor was like hey we have something called worship like seek night mm-hmm. and he was like hey you're two people preaching I'm gonna stick you in the middle how would you feel about that I was like I guess I mean I have a podcast mm-hmm. but I never did this before mm-hmm. and I preached that night and people were like oh my god you're such a great communicator I was like I don't even know what that means mm-hmm. but okay <laughs> <laughs> right it was kind of like and I think for the first time, like I experienced like studying a text, but then like God downloading in the moment and shocking myself with mm-hmm. what was coming out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I think this is what it means to like have a gift because mm-hmm. I never practiced this. Nobody ever taught me, mm-hmm. but it just worked. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is a thing. Yeah. So what? OK, so let's back up from that moment, because I have a I have a firm, a firm belief that there's always Things that we probably didn't notice mm-hmm. that were being orchestrated even before we knew Jesus for some of us that got saved. For like, sure. Like it's a it's a straight up Paul situation. Like so who Paul was made sense with who he was becoming. Mm-hmm. He just was redeemed. Mm-hmm. Right. So when you look back before that moment, mm-hmm. what do you think were things that were pointing you to that making sense to say yes to that? Um, well, I'm a PK, so my parents are pastors, which is probably why I was like, absolutely not. Right. I want no parts of yeah. this. Because if you know, like, why? 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 Why would you? Anybody why knows. Why, why would you why do that? Why y'all want to do this? Why? I don't it's understand. It's not. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think, like, over the course of my life, I've always, like, been a leader. Mm-hmm. Like, it didn't matter if it was, like, Girl Scouts or, like, things in college. Like, I've always been a leader. And I've always been a communicator. Like, I study communications, mm-hmm. but I always wanted to be behind the camera. So, but that was me. I'm like, right. no. But even when I w- grad school, like I studied production, but they would always make me like be acting it. They're like, no, you need to be the one mm. talking. Like you need yeah. to be one on a camera. And then I think when I sit down, I'm go like, oh, God was always saying, girl, you said it's cute that you like it back here, right? But it's, you're supposed to be up here. Yeah. So I think over time, when I think about it, it's like God was always. It was a road leading to this. Mm-hmm. I just was running mm-hmm. swiftly, like track star. Yeah. So I think like it makes sense. But it still shocks me. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's humility. It should never make all all the sense. No, it never does. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so you were PK. Mm-hmm. So that means you probably, because I wasn't a PK, but I was a CG. That was church girl. <laughs> like, For sure. All through and through. I think I got saved at like six, eight. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I got baptized a whole bunch right. of Right. Like, I still <laughs> smell like baptism. So... How so growing up in church, especially in a, a family of a pastor, it is always a challenge to have mm-hmm. like 
that defining moment yeah. or that before and after. Mm-hmm. You know, it just kind of feels like it's all a blur. And then at some point it probably got serious. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what that point was where you, I feel like we all, if you, if that was your experience, you have some moment where you're going from the routine, the muscle memory of what you mm-hmm. just know versus like something you know. Yeah, absolutely. My sophomore year in college. Yeah. So I started going to this church where, I don't know, it just it started to make sense that like stories I was reading about in the Bible made sense to my life. Mm-hmm. And I got really, really serious. Like I dived in like I would every break I had in school to school in Mississippi, I would go home. Like if they was having a revival, if they were having mm-hmm. like I just wanted to be in the presence of God. It became real to me mm-hmm. like in my sophomore year because I, I like went to college and was like, I'm going to live my life. I'm about to turn yes, up. Lord. I have to do all the things. I'm obedient. <laughs> Listen, I'm like, it's, it's time. Like, yeah. Y'all have stressed me out. It's my time. <laughs> and I would go home and act like I wasn't doing all the things I was doing. Right. And then yeah, I think my sophomore year was like, okay, I'm a little bit like this. This feels real. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I started to hear God more. And yeah. so then I would have a conviction. I would try to go back and do stuff. And I'd be like, it's still you feel the same. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> it's like, I don't like the way that this feels. Yeah. So then I started to get like serious about it. And then I would say maybe when I was 28, I just I experienced like a betrayal at the hands of my pastor. Mm-hmm. And I think. That moment is when Jesus became real to me because mm-hmm. I didn't have anything outside of him. Yeah. Like to pull from. OK, so let me just give a, a note of encouragement for all the parents. And your kids has been in BBS since they were in the womb. <laughs> Listen, this girl was a whole sophomore in college. Yes. Before she was like, ah, <laughs> you know what, Jesus, you might you might be legit. I was out of college. OK. I was out of college and I grew up under Tony Evans. He's a walking Bible. Like, I had no excuse. Um, but I still was like, I went to college and I was like, oh, not to kick it. Yeah. Y'all have been holding all these parties back for me. What is this? What's what? happening right here? There's what? a whole world out here. What? Y'all, people are here to kick it. Right? So I was like, I'm about to go live my best life. And I tried for a couple of years. And then I was like, I don't know why. Then it's, it's like, because you you like, this ain't even me. This is horrible. And I, I, had, yeah. I had a couple double backs. Right. You know, like yeah. I went to grad school. And I was like, no, guys, I'm sorry. I don't drink. I don't drink that. <laughs> and then one day, I don't know what happened. I was in the middle of. I went to Syracuse for grad school, and it's a party school. And yeah, I just like, remember being in the middle of the lawn. I changed my mind. Passed out like, well, I yeah. guess I do do this again. <laughs> well, I don't yeah, know. This is not really me. Just give me Right. A you know, just every moment. <laughs> Any moments. <laughs> Many weekends. <laughs> and then I'm get right again. Yes, for sure. So I need y'all to be encouraged, parents, because I do think sometimes we forget how long it takes for the dream to bear. Now, it doesn't have to be that way. Sometimes, you know, you are preaching at 15. That's great. Yeah. But for a lot of people, for a lot of people who've been, I mean, overexposure always leads leads to a dullness. Of mm-hmm. And so if you've been Jesus, Jesus, church, 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 you got to be, you have to have a confidence as a parent or even yourself as an individual, a confidence that that's not going to waste. Yeah. It's just that it may take a minute for it to bear fruit. If he don't snatch you out of something, mm-hmm. you know, addiction or some, some, a horrific, horrific situation or a different belief system. Like if you don't have that kind of moment, yeah. sometimes it's just it's a gradual thing. But what happens is, when it happens, ain't no, you not. It's not the same as when somebody else just got converted. No, he like okay, you got about ten years of mad stop. <laughs> yeah, and, and it just drops quickly. Yeah, like all of a sudden. Can I catch up? No, we've been here. Yeah, Go behind you, <laughs> you it. right? Can't catch up. Yeah, no. I feel like it's a straight Paul situation because he, it, he came out the gate. Now mm-hmm. he did have some time away with the Lord, but. His time away is unparalleled to what he dropped yeah. in scripture. You're like, wait, what? Yeah. You just got to say, Paul. <laughs> we How? When Jesus walk in, you didn't catch no fish with us. <laughs> no story. He's like, he said, hey, I'm going to drop these 96 letters on y'all. <laughs> Listen, he said, I see him. Right, right. So I think that can happen. So I think that's fascinating. But then the other thing you said that's fascinating that we don't really want to, we don't really want to live there is that we most often find Jesus after a betrayal, not a blessing. Yeah. We want to find him like we do. Life is great. For sure. Is that, y'all don't be, no, you don't, don't be paying attention. Right. You don't be paying attention. You don't. No, is that your feelings get hurt? Huh. Father. No, it was. It was like to be betrayed. For sure. Uh-huh. It was, it was like, I, I never experienced nothing like that in my life. But I, I think growing up in church, I needed that moment. Like I always say, like, I'm so grateful for it. I, mm-hmm. you know. It was bad. I never want to live it again. But I, I don't think I would know God the way I know him mm. without having that moment. How did that moment, what made you decide for that moment to 
draw you into Jesus and not turn you away from Jesus. Because some people might have that same moment. For sure. Especially church hurt is legit, yeah. you know. Um, and, and a lot of times people are like, they experience real hurt in the church. They attribute it to God. It becomes a whole thing. Yeah. It derails their journey. The enemy is great. He's like, that's what I wanted. Yeah. And they're taking years to find out, you know, that healing and I'm done with God or I'm done with church, I'm done with whatever. How did that moment for you become something that made you lean into Jesus and not away from him or his church? I think it's because I knew God. Like I had a personal relationship. Mm. So I was able to separate the two. Mm. So even though this person was a representation of God in my life, mm -hmm. I knew that his behavior didn't match the character of God. So it was kind of like, I'm like, OK, I don't really know what to do with any of this. But I do know that the only way I can get through this is with God. Because yeah. it was like I couldn't tell anybody because I felt like it affected everybody. Right. Just like if I say something to my mama, she's mm -hmm. going to like if I tell I'm like, I don't know who to go to. Right. <laughs> so it was just like I really didn't have a choice. And I'm like, I don't feel like God's like leave or go or whatever i didn't know what to so do you didn't feel like even after that personal betrayal that god was asking you to leave no not 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 until he gave me the go ahead yeah so like even after it was like exposed and i still like i didn't go back to work there but i still served until mm -hmm. god released me because mm -hmm. sometimes i mean that's also it happens in scripture like mm -hmm. he tells hagar <laughs> go back, back and submit yeah take it. and then he didn't say like <laughs> yeah she changed her mind on how she was treating her so i think like Sometimes I recognize now it was like God was building me. Mm. Like, even though that situation was crushing me, mm -hmm. there was something like God was trying to develop in my heart. Because I don't really like people. Like, I, I can't really be pastoral if I don't like people. Yeah. And I feel like in that situation, I developed my heart. Like, I understand how God loved us, loves us and how we need to also love others. Like, mm -hmm. God doesn't change his mind about us when we mess up. He 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 loves us just the same. Mm. He doesn't hold that over our heads. And I had a compassion and an empathy for people who were doing me dirty that I can't articulate. I don't know where it came like, from. That don't even make sense. It didn't make sense. I, it didn't. I it, can't receive. <laughs> I I I <laughs> the Holy Spirit be taking receipts. Like I would like to I was, receive. I, like, he said, "Get rid of David. I don't have your receipt. Not, it, come on, come, he's like, because I'm like." I just feel like it was the epitome of playing in my face uh, and what you deserve. Yeah. But it was like there was something I didn't even want to. I could have. I, I ran everything. Boy, I could have just emailed oh, everything. Like, social media where the this. bodies are bare. I know all yeah, the things. Yeah. And it was like, but I never even had a desire to do that. It was like my heart was so broken that I don't know. It's like the Lord's close to the brokenhearted because he yeah. does. Because I really felt like I had, I just felt sad for them. Like, I never wanted to, like, box until I had moved to L.A. and had started my life over. Then I was like, okay. This ain't cool. my fault. Right. Why am I struggling? <laughs> I think this makes sense. Right. <laughs> like, well, all that holiness, whatever. I yeah. It out. yeah. But, it, like, in the moment, I didn't. I, I felt like I learned God's heart. Yeah. Girl, listen. That, man, if people could get that, I do believe that the enemy uses the brokenness of man mm -hmm. and especially men and women in positions of spiritual authority yeah it's not that they're excused no justified but the enemy uses their brokenness to shut something off in the life of the believer absolutely and it he we we choose not to see past that specific incident to the broader mm -hmm. body in christ or we have such a such an anemic relationship with God ourselves. Yep. That that person that failed us was our relationship. With yeah. God. And so because you're like you're saying here, you can love God, be failed and betrayed deeply by a man, a woman, man or woman of God, and still love God. Yeah. And still serve up under them. It's not because they came and apologized. Ooh, ooh. Mm mm. And I, it's, it's, it's a little fear. Yeah, because cause in my head I was like, in my head I was like, oh, no. head, I was like <laughs> you know, because I remember sitting there some days like. And God was like, but and then you around people who are like, oh my gosh, they're fully so think they and you just be like, they changed my life. They are, they are. changed their life. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and you do, you have to, and and I think too, the human side of you goes like, God, why did this happen to me? Yeah, like why did you allow it? Mm -hmm. And I definitely went through that journey too because we 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 feel entitled because we serve God. Yeah, so we're like I serve at the church, I work at the church, I do all the things. It's like why would you let? Why not you? Yeah, like this is this is a part of the suffering is a part of the journey. It's unfortunate that it came by the hands of someone who represented God, yeah. but like following Jesus doesn't eliminate issues yeah. and trauma and like stuff. No, we get to go through it with God. Yeah. That's the benefit of having him, but right. it doesn't eliminate it. Yeah.
Oh my gosh. Listen, that that might set somebody free. I'm telling you, the church hurt thing is so big. Mm -hmm. If you're leaving one church to go to another church, or if you're leaving the church, period, because somebody hurt you, nobody wins but the enemy. No. Nobody wins but the enemy. Yeah. The, God, the Lord is like, let me show you the Bible. Let me show you a list of people who just hurt folks. <laughs> That's everybody except my son. <laughs> he the only one. So it is, and it's not, again, it's not to justify bad behavior or not hold people accountable, but the way we allow someone's behavior to affect yes. our spiritual journey mm -hmm. is up to us. Yes. That's up to us. Even even when I have been betrayed deeply by family, we people have suffered abuse and trauma. Mm -hmm. People don't give up on the idea of family. No. They just know their family was jacked. Listen, they still want a good family. But man, the enemy make us think one bad, ten bad church experiences. Yeah. Give up because that's his goal. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. And and let me ask you this question. And you don't have to go into detail. Do you feel like in all that time you've seen that person be dealt with by God? <laughs> I'm just asking. Mm. I mean, not even publicly. Maybe everybody don't know. Mm -mm. I just want y'all to know when the Lord say vengeance is mine, he's also saying vengeance is none of your business. None of your. And that's that's funny. Vengeance is mine. It's not like I want you to stand no. and watch me get them. No, I pray he's for you. Vengeance is none of your business. It's none of your business. And it's I might not let you see them suffer. No. Okay. And you're the only person who's asked that question like that, because usually I don't be fooling with it. Right. But I thought that was a really great question because that is usually my response is like, it has nothing to do with me. You know, it's like, it's like, what happened? You know, did he, I don't know. The Lord deals with us the way he sees fit. It's not my business. not my concern. I pray for the mercy of God mm -hmm. because even it, like what happened to me was God's mercy towards him. Yeah. Like we don't always see it that way, sure but something being exposed is God's mercy towards <laughs> you. It's him saying, Hey, I'm trying to deal with this before it deals with you. And so I think like, it's none of our business. It is heavy. It is none like of our business. You know it. I know. But sometimes you be like, Lord, come on. I just want to see a little. Especially when I first went to LA and I was struggling. I yeah. was on an air mattress in yeah. my friend's living room. I want them to this be is, a little bro. This is this is <laughs> not. What is, hello? Yeah. But like, if I was gonna move here and, and take all these on the chin, I just know I was gonna be living somewhere nice with whatever job I wanted. Option to choose from. I'm going to tell you, if that scripture and the truth of how we trust the Lord mm -hmm. is like lip service, he'd be like, okay. All right. We'll because see. let me see. Okay. you First of all, you can't tie my relationship with you or your relationship to the church, to this person. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if you tie your healing to how I handle them. Ooh. Can you be healed without knowing how I handle them? Because what if I just handle them in their house and in their heart? How how you going to know? What? It's, not your it's none of your business. David was still king. What are you talking about? Adultery and murder? He's like, I'm not even taking your job, bro. But you got to pay. And, and everybody didn't see that. Ooh. Like, what? I mean, he's still David. He still get the man after God's own heart. And still got to always right people. Now. All is in glory. I know. Oh. Like, bro, you took it. I know. Like, <laughs> so I have, the Lord said, I have left it. What? What about you? Yes. Yeah, I know. That's real. That's hard. Man. That's really hard. Ooh. But I think that's going to be good for somebody because I'm telling you, that thing, oh, that was a word. It holds on to us. For oh, my sure. gosh. That's so good. Um, you might need to pause the podcast right here, y'all. Just go ahead and think about that. It's somebody that you're probably waiting on God to show you the evidence that he dealt with them. Before like, you were not going to do it. Ooh, not your business. Because it never had nothing <laughs> to do with them in the first place. It's not about them. Listen, here's what's crazy. Even when they are legitimately wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And there's legitimate healing that you have to do because of the hurt. There's still grace, because God is like, one day you are gonna hurt somebody. You gonna need it. There you go. You gonna think you being godly, and you will have slowly drifted or done something that you wish never got out. No, you're gonna need the same grace. <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> you're gonna need the same. Grace. We all. That's that's one of the things. It's like, man, it hurt, right? But I've hurt people Ooh, too. Jesus. I've heard people too, and I I would like to be forgiven. Right. This ended up being a betrayal. I don't know how we got here. I'm like, <laughs> well, somebody needed it. Somebody it. <laughs> this, this is my least favorite phrase, and I know we all say it. When somebody's like, I don't know who this is. <laughs> I don't know who this like, is. I'm like, but I feel like, not me, just because of, <laughs> and I'm sure I've said it too, that's just, you know, pot calling the kettle black. Okay. We're going we gonna to bring it up a little bit. So tell me what's exciting for you right now in ministry. Like, I've been able to kind of watch from a distance. We really connected last year, which was random. Mm -hmm. I still keep forgetting how we connected, but whatever. <laughs> See where you are. Praise the Lord. 
Um, but watching just the Lord do things through you, like what has that been like? I feel like the last two or three years have mm-hmm. been more accelerated yeah. than previous years. So what's what's exciting for you in ministry right now? Uh oh, I just finished my first book. Uh, come on, book. Yes. Come that on, that is really exciting. What's it called? What's it it's called The Journey of Yes. Oh, the Everyday Adventure of Radical Obedience. Oh. What a tagline. What's the tagline again? <laughs> the everyday adventure of radical obedience. Yes, come on. Radical? Okay, so give me what's the heart behind the book. I mean, the title's pretty self-explanatory. For sure. Yeah, that it's it's literally this, that like the journey of yes is not about what we get on the other side of our obedience, but the God we get to meet through it. Mm. Come on. That's the elevator pitch. I'm glad. That's the best I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yes, I yes. got it. Record that. <laughs> no, Tell me that no. clip later. Yes, I'm gonna please. That. I'm going to that later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's got a pub date and release date. Yep, uh, June 25th. No, June 24th of 25. Oh, come on. We'll do a book release. My release is in April. So come on. We'll, we'll, do, no. we'll do a little book release. Listen, the authorship. Come on. That's what we need. Yeah, because I never thought I would be writing a book. Yeah. Yes. Ever. So that's, I know that's right. I'm not really odd. I'm a fake author. I, like, if I wasn't teaching and talking, I wouldn't have nothing to say. That is the Sitting hardest at a piece of paper thing I've ever had to know, like, to. Oh, yeah. I'm not. No. Oh, I'm fake, girl. Go to a real it's, Yeah, not me. Mm-mm. And I'm, I cheat. Yeah. I've talked oh. into the girl dictation. And ever know? Ever know got voice notes? No, I'm saying on my laptop. That dictation, that, that might be, that won't be, that'd be taking too long. Really? So, it, and then it, it don't put punctual. Ever know? You're right, but I can go back and read it and be bro, like, bro, Ever know got the voice note. Yes. It, and then it, oh, I found that it changed again. Right. <laughs> Chapters be 900 pages. They like, ma'am, they too many it. words. I too many words. Know. Then you're Start talking. talking. <laughs> so I'm like, it's the only way these words get on the paper. Right. <laughs> you have to skim this page. Yes. Because like, yeah. when you're talking, you talk and you repeat your sentences and you go back and you're like, no one wants to read that sentence. No. I don't. I don't. They already heard it. Yeah. It's so true. But, you know, it's been a, a good process. Like, I've learned a lot. Yeah. I never know. Yeah. For, oh, for sure. Very humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we praying for that. Uh, the journey to yes. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, so what else though? Like what what kind of um spaces are you finding yourself in? Are you still doing a lot of local church stuff? Are you doing other things? Like what what Yeah, I think exciting? um most exciting is I found myself kind of like I I feel like I exist between faith and culture. Mm-hmm. It can be a dangerous space. It can be. It can be very very dangerous. But lately I've been finding myself being pulled into spaces where I'm able to disciple people of culture. That's and that's been really fun yeah. and sad mm-hmm. sometimes because you find a lot of people like, yeah. yeah, I believe in Jesus. I'm like, I don't, I don't think I don't you do. I don't think you do. And so, like, instead of me fussing at you, like, let's walk together. Yeah. And, like, let's... So I've been creating spaces for us to, like, sit and then ask questions and us mm-hmm. wrestle. And so that's been really cool. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. Nervous, but, like, yeah. I feel like, man, if... If we don't, who will? Who Listen, like? Man, that is so powerful. I, I really, I'm gonna ask you too about how you study and how your how you've seen your study and a personal scripture evolve over time. Mm-hmm. And that's where I want to land a little bit. But before we get there, this discipleship space, like creating space to engage, it is so ne- it's so it's needed necessary. because there's a lot of foolishness out there. But there's also a rise of voices who are just saying. There's a lot of foolishness out there. Yeah, but but I'm like, but then yeah, what else? Please. Yeah, you ain't even told me what's wrong. Please. Like you just have been like, they wrong, they wrong, they lying, this ain't true. Please. Okay. This is why I love you. But where <laughs> is the truth? Can, 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 you, can somebody just speak the truth? Tell me the truth. And quite honestly, if you tell me the truth, I'm gonna figure out they not to find the law. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And I'm like, God's voice voices yeah. are just rising. It's just like, let me show you how this person is wrong. Cool, but that's not it's not no you. truth. And so yeah. it's you do need people that's gonna call out and hold folks accountable, I guess, to the degree you can do that from a distance through a screen. But I mean this thing that says, no, we're gonna be yeah. disciples, we're gonna dive into scripture, see what it looks like in real life. Yeah. Then I don't have to preach to you about no, it's true. You're gonna be able to tell No, no and it's true. I literally had a conversation with a, a person and she asked me if I watched a particular pastor. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I don't really. And I was trying my best to like skate around yeah. why I don't. Yeah. And I was like, no, no, like, you know, I've been a believer for a long time. Yeah. I just need meat. You know, she said, so what does that mean? I'm yeah. like, ah, all right. I said, well, sometimes, you know, like when I listen to the scripture or I listen to the sermon, it shouldn't be about me. I'm like, because the Bible is not about me. Right. And so then she was like, hmm. <laughs> oh, really? She's like, okay. And so then we like keep diving in. She goes back and watch the same thing. She messages me and says, hey, 
I'm going to check out those other sermons. She said, because I listened today with different ears. Yeah. And she said, it actually didn't do anything for me. Because mm. it was driving your emotions. Yeah. But if you take a step back and go, well, what is what am I really learning? What am I learning about God? Am I am I growing? Like, in my faith? Yeah. Or am I just getting like, yeah, my haters? Huh? I'm like, what? Purpose. Not about to get delivered again. <laughs> this month is going to be it. It's like, what's <laughs> going on? So I'm like, how do you ever grow yeah. if nobody ever tells you what's wrong? Yeah. Like, you can't grow like that. And so I was like, man, it's just making people aware, yeah. but also saying, here's what it sounds like when it is right. Right. And so, no, I agree with that. Yeah. And if you, and as your appetite shifts, mm -hmm. your discernment sharpens. Yes. And so we, you, I know where you're spending your time because if we're just scrutinizing a speaker or certain mm -hmm. pastors or whatever, then you're spending way more time listening to a messenger than you are in the yes. message. Because I don't know anybody my husband, the one great Dr. Tony Evans, uh, anybody you name, that I agree with 100% everything. That Every, thank Ever. you. And these are men of God. I know women of God. Because if I'm in the word for me and the Holy Spirit is speaking through me in me and in in Jada's story, yeah. there's going to always be a point where I'm like, mm, I think I see that different. Yeah. But that's not heresy or false doctrine. It's it's a minor point, but it's if you don't have a point where you never disagree with somebody, that's a problem. And you don't have all these weird sharpening, you know, because you're going to have point. It's still other humans taking the word of God. Yes, doing their, their best. Interpretation. It's their interpretation, their interpretation. which means we're going to land solid on all the true things, mm -hmm. major on the majors, and those minors we may do. Yes. On, you know, but that's a sign that you're not hearing the voice for sure in, in the word of God on your own, that you never disagree with even the, I mean, Somebody could rise from the dead. I love it. He's Joseph, but if he come in here, we probably gonna get to some point where I'm like, I don't know if I feel on that. Yeah. You know? So I think that's really good. That's really good. Uh, okay. Here's the last question I want to ask. As you look around this mm -hmm. the generation that we're in, the culture, where we kind of have a move now, a revival, if you will, mm -hmm. of um, Christian influence. Mm hmm. Um, some people call it celebrity, but mm -hmm. it could be a bad, that can have a negative connotation. I don't think it's all negative, but I do think we are playing with this idea of elevating influence and in Christian voices over local church, like how God mm -hmm. is calling you to live it out every day in community. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you seeing in that space and how do you feel like God's going to use you in that space? I think there needs to be a both and. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be, we need to work together um, because I feel like I would fall in that influencer and I hate it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, stop. Well, don't hate yeah. it. It's good. It's good. It has good to it. It's just not everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I hate the bad parts yeah. of it. Okay. Um, but I think like, I, I think for me, I try to do a huge like push mm -hmm. for the local church. Because I know how I benefited from the local church. Mm -hmm. And what I'm recognizing is like when people get real pastors, they're easily offended because they never had pastors. Right. So like Ooh. it's really bad. Like I <laughs> I had one girl who was like, my pastor was like, I need to, she was going to like six Bible studies a week mm -hmm. and trying to serve at the church. And they were like, you need to stop going everywhere. Mm -hmm. and she said, they're trying to control me. I said, no, they're pastoring you. They they care. Why? Because the person that's on your socials don't know your life. Exactly. And you have too many voices. Everybody's not saying the same thing. Yeah. I'm like, no, your pastors care about you. Yeah. And what it what it is is we our generation has not had pastors. Mm -hmm. Like 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 yeah. real ones. Yeah. We got like voices. influencers. Yeah. And yeah. our pastors. Yeah. And so it's like when somebody oh. is shepherding that's you. Hurt. Like shepherding you is like it's it's gonna hurt. Yeah. You want somebody to like Especially if you haven't been fathered. It's, it is tough. That's another part. Yeah. And so I think <laughs> a whole one, <laughs> you need an hour for that one. Yeah. But yeah, so I think that I think that there is this rise and I think that there is this a re revival, but I think we need to do it in partnership. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what we're seeing is like local pastors are feeling threatened by influencers when I'm like, I don't want to pastor your people. Yeah. I, I want to have a place to send them. Right. If I host a Bible study, like my, one of my things, like I do pop up Bible studies. My heart is to partner with local churches in that environment. Can you send somebody to this Bible study? So when I leave and go back to L.A., yeah, they have a place to plug in. Yeah. Because right now there is this rise of false doctrine and everybody's teaching. People mm -hmm. don't know where to go. So now yeah, they're not they're going wrong. anywhere. Yeah. So now they're like, well, if this, I, so now they're just at home scrolling through our videos and listening to podcasts. No, because. Yeah. Faith needs friends. It needs community. Yeah. It needs accountability. We need to be in local. I 
need to be everybody in a local body. Needs. Everybody yeah. needs to be in church. Yeah. And so I think like what we can do with the influence and with the voices is say, hey, I love that you're getting fed this way, but please go find a local church. Mm -hmm. Oof, that's good. Okay, well, I'm not going to be here all day, but <laughs> that's good. I'm telling you the struggle. No, it is real. And they're like, this is my favorite person or these are my favorite people. But I'm like, yeah, but who see you on Monday? They're okay. like, hey, what you doing? Because I heard that you was with someone. So they don't know. It's no, just like this know. one direction of information. And I think it's so much more comfortable. And if I don't like what you're saying, I just, I just turn you off. Turn you off. And, and it, and it yeah. also puts a lot of pressure on us. Like my, my friends are getting on me because some, like a girl had DM'd me and she sent me 30 voice notes and she's trying to tell me a whole story. And I'm like, you, there, there, do you have a plan? And, and they were like, Brenda, you can't, you can't talk to strangers. And I'm can't. like, I don't like, want to, but... Cold counseling. Uh, <laughs> and then I was like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like, this no, is too much. No. And so I was like, you you got the answer. Like, and please go find a local church. Yes. Find a so, church. yeah, and I think, Pray. like, there's this uh, organization, 10 by 10, mm -hmm. who, and they work, like, they're pulling us in with influencers, and we're having, like, conversations with pastors on how we can work together, because I think this doesn't work for either of us if we are separate. Because mm. we we can't build churches on Instagram. Yeah. No. Or in Patreon. Like, mm -hmm. we, there's only... <laughs> there's, we can't. We cannot. I, that's the one that you pay to listen yeah. to stuff, right? I'm old. Oh, yeah. No, that is. It's the subscriber-based one. Okay. That's okay. the one that Lord has said I couldn't do. Oh, so you asked who didn't you? I did. I was three days out. <laughs> I was three days... I was three days out. Or I would like... I mean, I had built it. I was ready. <laughs> The oh, so I know are you so quick. He said, first of all, who said who this? Who told you to build it? <laughs> you didn't spend all your good resources. Three months? <laughs> I mean, I, I had the content was ready. We be having a plan. The Patreon people were like, oh my God, can we use your page? to?" Because I'm like a creator. That's the word I come from. So I was like, yes, I get to do both. And I was ready. The Lord said, you are a minister first. Yes, yeah, sit down. Disconnect. Oh. This. Go sit down. It was sad. It was ready. It, it was really sad. Oh. I pouted for a good two days. Like, it's legit. I understand. He's like, no, it's right. We did. And he was like, but if you had asked me. For if you had. For sure. I would have. I, I thought that. I, I thought because, you know, you know what we do? We like, this came from, this idea came from the Lord. <laughs> to be, it, Look at this opportunity. So much sense. This Thank you, Lord. From the Lord. And I never said, like, this you? Right. I just mm -hmm. assumed. We just thanking him. It was like, flowing. It was, you know, there was a grace. <laughs> He said, oh, amen. Well, we know one day, Brenda, have Patreon, the Lord has come down and been like, girl, it's your time. Yeah, probably not. Probably not going to happen. That's all right. For those of you who haven't subscribed to it, go with God. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's putting you in hell. Everybody's no, 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 no. Yeah, and I think... And I Everybody think, does it different. No, and I really think it was for me because I have a thing where, like, I, I like to be self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And, like, I make my own plan. Yeah. And the Lord's like, this is not what this season is. You're depending on me. Yeah. So, stop. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Okay. Last question. Um, what is it like if you had to, I don't know, say, here's my my kind of life message right now. Like when I when I teach or when I talk to people or when I publish something now, I want I always want people to walk away with this after they've encountered something I've said. Yes, come on. You have a life message. <clears throat> I do. You know what it is. It is. Because you probably had it before you got called in the ministry. You're like, man, this is a... I would go crazy if people didn't get this. I feel like I say it all the time is I made it a mantra, but it's chase God and let my dreams catch me. Mm. Um, and it's from Matthew 6 and 33. Mm -hmm. But that's been my life. Yeah. Like I've had to walk away from all the things I love mm -hmm. the most in pursuit of God. But he never like he always makes the things I feel like I lose mm -hmm. chase me. Mm. Like I've never anything I've ever had, I've never had to pursue it. It failed yeah. me. Yeah. And I feel like it's worth like the yes to God is worth it. Mm -hmm. Like it feels like you're losing, but you will win in the end. Like and I don't know, like prosperity type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm I'm sticking to that. Like I, I've gotten to do amazing things. Nothing beats the way I know God mm -hmm. because I said yes. Mm. That's a, that is that message sounds good in theory, but in a very purpose driven Culture. culture. Yeah, and we counterculture. I mean, we're idolizing purpose. For we're not sure. like, Lord, tell me. We're like, Lord, here's my purpose. Bless it. Yeah. Purpose, purpose. Come purpose, on. Purpose, 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 vision, boards. I'm like, good. Stop, Lord. Because my vision know. board still got, and none of that stuff came to no, my Vision board is 60 <laughs> I don't know who's going to need to bring me uh, ESV. <laughs> because I'm like, it's, 
it's the great commandment, like love God, make disciples. That's, that's your purpose. That's your purpose. Please. <laughs> yeah. But chase God and then the dream. Wait, let my dreams let catch my dreams, me. Let, let my dreams catch me. That's good. good. That's a good old word. Okay. All right, Miss Bridget, but we're going to keep our eye on you. You know? Uh, no, I'm glad that, that the Lord allowed us to connect. And for felt sure. We no, because, wait, I'm grateful for you. But I have to tell, I, I told her last time I saw her, but I have to tell you publicly, like, because you are a huge influence. When I feel like the Lord was calling me to ministry, I was like, absolutely not. Those people are weird. <laughs> and I started seeing your Facebook clips. And you had, like, funky hair. <laughs> and you was always and fly. And I was like, I was like, if I can do it like that, then I'll do it. Because you were just yourself. You always cracking jokes, but you were for sure, you preached the word, like the gospel, like for sure. And I was like so inspired by that because I had never seen anybody just be quirky and yeah. themselves because most people be all buttoned up wearing heels and I, I'm i I'm never going to do that. Right. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, it's not even how you are. Right. Out of here. Like, right. Stop pretending. Mm -hmm. And you were just yourself. And I always felt like, I don't really fit in anybody's box. Mm. And so when I saw, I started watching your clips on Facebook. It was a long oh time ago. God, right. Yeah. Before I even knew I would ever be in ministry. But we always, yeah, you know, I'm like, there. it's there. I'm like, if I ever did, I don't be like her. Right. And so it was really, oh. last year when I got to meet you, I was like, I'm, whenever you call, I'm yeah. coming. She basically, she's saying I'm old. That's what she's saying. That's not what I'm saying. I started watching your clips when I was 20. <laughs> <laughs> and that's 20 years later. <laughs> I can just sit here. Wow. Look at that. I love that. <laughs> Listen, that's a blessing to me because I love teaching. And I love that story right there. And I remember you telling me that. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing to me because I know when the Lord called me to teach, I was like, well, who and where? Because I don't play piano on a floor dress. <laughs> and I'm not teaching Proverbs 31 every time I talk. I don't know what these people are talking about. And so the Lord just... That is not, it's not always comfortable being the first, yeah. you know, I'm not saying like I'm some pioneer. I'm saying I just had to do it trusting. Yeah. And if a little bit was able to inspire you, great. Because guess what? Now you're doing a whole lot of stuff that that's going to be going to feel like the first. You're like, mm -hmm. who else gets this part of it? Yeah. And it's just going to be you. And so many times the Lord's going to be like, I want you to go first. Yeah. Be all right. And it's so, hard. Yeah, it's hard. So thank you for sticking it out. Well, girl, you you <laughs> taking it to the next. I need some twists. I haven't done that hairstyle, so <laughs> maybe. But anyway, thank you so much, thank Brenda. You. you know, we'll do a part two. We'll get you back in here. <laughs> Brenda family, y'all. She put me up here all the time. So we just, this is, this is, I love coming here. Just be on the lookout because Brenda's going to be around. And go check out the book. It releases next summer. Yes. So we probably have to do a podcast again so we can pump up the book release. For sure. First week, first week of release is very important for books. And so keep your mm -hmm. eye out. We need all these voices uh, out here creating resources for us. So thank you, Ms. Brennan. And until next time. Yes. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to leave a comment, leave a review, share, subscribe, all the things, and we'll catch you next time.